don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. Waiguchi ga kalsa, Waiguchi ki fate. Thank you for joining me again, Jag Singh on Positive Minds on the Sikh channel. Um, my name is Jag Singh, a little bit about myself. I'm a writer, I'm a speaker, motivational speaker, and I've recently written my book, Unbreakable, which is based on my childhood in the 1970s. Um, it illustrates the uh, brutal hate crime, bullying uh, that we faced during those years and how we got through it. The positive side is how we got through it. And also you guys can follow me on Twitter at Jag Singh underscore I can for constant, constant motivation. Positive Minds is a program on which I bring experts and inspirational people who give us advice and information on how we can better our lives and the people around us. Today's topic um, covers the fact that we're all busy in life, yeah? We, we're, we're making dinner for the kids, we're picking up the children uh, from school, we're working, you know, we're constantly on a rat race. And Sometimes what we need to do is just find time to meditate. Now, meditation is an art form which can be very enlightened. It can enlighten you. And in order to do that, we need to sit back and think about our ancestors. We need to think about the gurus. Uh, they meditated. They meditated for hours. They meditated for days. And they did this to find enlightenment and also to uh, secure their well-being. And today I'm going to bring on an expert on this show who's going to speak to us about meditation. Her name is uh, Ila Kagram and she's from an organization called Souls Light. Thank you, Ila, for joining us today. Thank you. I'm so blessed and honored to be with you, Jag. Thank you for inviting me. Excellent, excellent. So you're the expert on meditation, okay, an art form that we have all, you know, many people have forgotten. And we're going to be speaking about how we can actually use this uh, great art to uh, find out enlightenment. Now, Ila, tell me a bit about Souls Light, please. So Souls Light is a company um, that I created many, many years ago. I think it's over about 20 decades ago. You know, of course, the name has changed over that process. But it was really, you know, the Souls Light came to me because it really is about our Souls Light. And it really is about our authentic self and our true nature which is so powerful, so innate and so present. And it's there to help people to align with that true nature. And so the name Souls Light came up to help people to reconnect with their soul, to understand the nature of their soul, to understand the wisdom of their soul and to understand the healing power of their soul. Excellent. Thank you very much. And what kind of different classes uh, do you do, please, Ella? So the kind of classes that we do, there's two that we're doing at the moment. One is called Tao Calligraphy Movement Meditation. And because of the coronavirus and the COVID situation at the moment, we actually opened it up free to anybody who wants to join, just so that people can benefit through this difficult times. You know, as human beings, if we can't help each other, then, you know, we really aren't human beings were human doings and so that meditation is very powerful it's a one hour practice on mondays where we use the power of Tao calligraphy which you can see behind me on the wall to enhance our healing to enhance our physical mental emotional um and also our spiritual healing so it can it can can activate all of those things so that you can be the best version of you that you can be. It's very, very powerful. And so we get, we chose 12 o'clock so that people can join in their lunch hour. It can be a time, you know, for people to just join in. If they don't understand it at that time, just experience the freedom of it. And then we've also got chanting on Thursdays where we chant some mantras. Um, one of the mantras we are chanting at the moment is names of Buddhas, names of holy beings. And to chant is what you become. What you chant is what you become. So to chant a name of a holy being is what you become, a holy being. So that on Thursday is very, very powerful. 
We also have um, programs every, uh, you know, every other month called the Dow Hands Practitioner Training, where we actually help you become a healer so that you can, number one, self-heal, number two, heal your family members, and three, your communities, and more. You know, it starts with us, and so this is for us to empower you to be the best you can be. Because with, I'll tell you about my experience, Ila. Um, I was mm -hmm. involved in the rat race. I remember I was about 22, 23 years old, <clears throat> excuse me. And I was just like everyone else, <clears throat> running about, thinking about money, this, that, how I'm going to make ends meet. And then I sat there and I thought about the gurus, uh, the Sikh gurus, of how they meditated mm -hmm. and how they mm -hmm. found enlightenment. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, I need to use that to better my life. So what I started to do was nothing too complicated. I started to spend two to five minutes a day um, <clears throat> sitting there thinking of absolutely nothing. And I would um, visualize a picture of Guru Nanak, Guru Gobind Singh, like you have just said there, um, mm. of, of, these, of these great images in my mind. And that's all I'd think about. But to start off with, it was hard because they say, mm. you know, you've got to stand at the gates of your mind and, you know, make sure what thoughts you come in. And, but I found it so peaceful so tranquil to do that and up to this day um, I'm 50 now and I still do it every day I find a few minutes just to um, just relax you know the breathing uh, the posture and obviously just kind of like shut out the whole world and it makes a hell of a lot of difference um, you know I'm gonna ask you a question do you think um, meditation can have an, a positive effect on mental health and well-being you know absolutely the key thing is for us to understand meditation isn't about, oh, I'm going to stop my thoughts. You know, that's like saying to a child, stop being a child. That's like saying to a doctor, stop doing and he trying to heal people with the medicine. That's like saying to an engineer, don't go out and do the things that engineers do. You know, the job and the role of a mind is to think. But the, the key thing is to know how to do meditation in, the, in a way that it can enhance the mind. It can enhance the heart, your soul, your body, in every aspect of it. So it's not about trying to quieten your mind because that's difficult to do. It's about utilizing your mind so that you can bring in the aspect of peace. And that's one of the key things that we teach, Jag. You know, we teach a, a, a process. We call it the six power technique. And it is actually one of the power techniques in that is the mind power. So we use the mind in creative visualization. So, you know, I always say to people, the mind is an incredible employee, but it is a very, very bad leader. You know, if you leave the mind on its own devices, it will take you into havoc. Right. Yeah. But if you allow the mind to be guided and guided in a, in a proper manner, then actually it can be your greatest asset. And so that's, uh, you know, some of the techniques that we teach on. Our I mean, <clears throat> for example, uh, there's a, let's, let's talk about children, for example, teenagers now. Um, a lot of teenagers have got a lot going on in their life uh, at that time, at that age. Uh, they've got exams going on. They've got the, they've got the school. They've got uh, uh, the quotas for work is increasing. I mean, how can uh, meditation help? Teenagers, for example, you know, how can we how can we help their, them uh, organize their thoughts and relax a little bit? How can meditation support that? Yeah. So I think the key thing is people have um, preconceived ideas about the word meditation. So therefore, people have come up with the words mindfulness. You know, we've got mindfulness, which is being taken active in schools at the moment. But remember, that only deals with the mind. You know, what about mm. the heart? What about the soul? What about the physical body? You've got spiritual meditations. You know, these are sometimes these are spiritual and um, religious practices and they're all good as well. Then you've got focus meditation. You know, for example, you're focusing on uh, a candle or an image to take your guidance on that. We've got movement meditation. Then you've got the mantra meditation and transcendental meditation. So the key thing is to understand a child first and foremost okay to get a child to sit down in one place and say you are going to think of nothing it's it's really next to impossible to do that so yeah, especially you know, at that age, yeah, especially. exactly because you know we're taking them away from their true being at that time you know they want to play so the key thing is to incorporate meditational techniques into their play activities and so one of the ways we've done this with children is using Tao calligraphy 
which is very, very powerful. So we have a big calligraphy. So it's about six foot calligraphy, you know, and the calligraphy can say words like love, gratitude, peace, harmony. And then we teach them almost like Tai Chi movements. So you're, they're like holding a ball, you know, they're holding a ball in your, uh, the lower abdomen, you know, near the lower part of your body. They're holding a ball and then they're tracing the calligraphy with the ball. And then they're singing and chanting. So actually it becomes playful meditation. And so they really enjoy it. And the kids are really, really, you know, moving very fast in that. We've got um, some students who are doing this in the U.S. with schools. Um, you know, there's a school called Apex. And they're underprivileged kids and stuff. And this meditation is taken to them through song, through dance, through art, you know. And that's what we've got to do with the schools. That's what we've got to do with the younger people. We've got to do something that is going to help them in the space they are at the moment. Not saying, right, everybody's going to sit down. You're going to close our eyes, cross our legs, and we're going to think of nothing. That's next to impossible for a, a young child to do. So that, that's, that's what I would say. I would say to all institutions, all schools at the moment, meditation, whatever we term, we call it soulfulness. You know, it takes away that terminology of meditation and the preconceived idea of what meditation is. And we say, let us now just play with the, the aspect of the six power techniques. And we teach them. So we teach them through creative visualization, you know, which is the mind power. We teach them through mantras, which are some of the songs we sing or some positive affirmations that we say so that they can actually infuse that into their being. We use sound power. We use um, soul power. We just say hello. So this is where our, our spiritual teachers, you know, Guru Nana, Guru Gobind Singh, all of them, they believed in Seva, right? Yeah. They believed in Seva. And so then for this part of their seva was to chant the names, you know. And so we've incorporated this into the say hello technique. So, for example, if I just started to talk to you like this, well, you know, Jag, yes, that's it. You will feel really disconnected from me. But if I say hi, Jag, it's so lovely to see you. And it's so lovely to be here with you. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Can you see the smile on your face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Of course, it makes so a that's difference. the way we do this. Absolutely. So we have to say hello to the outer souls. The outer souls are our gurus. The outer souls are divine beings. You know, it doesn't matter what culture we're from. We're all honoring someone. You know, if we don't believe, and, and if we don't believe in any of these things, we don't believe in God, we can honor Mother Earth, right? Yeah. We can yeah, honor yeah, heaven. Yeah. Or we can honor the seas. It doesn't matter. So as long as we say hello. So we say, dear, dear heaven, dear Guru Nanak, you know, dear, um, any spiritual father that you have, yeah. I love you. I honor you and appreciate you. Then Excellent. we do a short forgiveness. Yeah. Then we do a short forgiveness. Say, would you please forgive me for the mistakes that I've made in all of my lifetimes? I humbly apologize. I will do better. I will serve more. And then, for example, if you have pain in your knees, then you say hello to your knees. How many of us say hello to parts of our body? Right? So you say, dear, my beloved knees, I love you. You have the power to heal yourself. Do a good job. Or dear, my heart, if we're going through some emotional stuff or we're going through some relationship issues. Dear, my heart, I love you. I appreciate you. You have the power to heal and transform. That's the say hello technique. So we've got the say hello. We've got the mind power. We've got the sound power. We, uh, we've got the breathing power. So we don't breathe correctly, right? You know, for example, we're angry. We start angry. Breathing goes. <laughs> so actually our breathing is erratic. And then we're losing some of the chi, some of the energy in our in our being. So we teach people how to breathe properly as they're doing this meditation. And then we use the power of the calligraphy so to trace. So I can show you a card that we have. Um, one of the cards we have, we give these cards to people if they, they don't come to our class. In the classes, we have big calligraphies. But, you know, one of the cards, for example, is I show you here. This is a calligraphy. 
and this says uh, greatest compassion and compassion increases our service and without service you know we really cannot transform you know? so those are the six power techniques and the body power of course is where you put your hands as healing happen so if you want to heal your heart you just put your hand on your heart and one on your lower abdomen and so that for me has worked it's worked with old people we we take this to about 95 older people there the youngest person in that group is 75 and they're doing these practices and I can tell wow. you if you think kids cannot meditate 90 80 70 plus years old cannot even sit still for one second but they're meditating and they're doing Excellent. this for an hour and a half with us so that's that's a little bit about how I feel you know we can transform this Superb, superb. Um, just, just to remind us, uh, Ila, what is a mantra and what is a chant, please? Okay, so a, a mantra, man means, you know, the heart. Tra means repetition. So a mantra is any positive um, vibrational message that we are chanting that has some positive frequency and vibration. So a mantra can be light. We can say light, 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 light. A mantra can be Guru Gobind Singh, Guru Nanak. That can be a mantra. It, it's creating a field. So a mantra is what is creating a field. So through our vibration, through our frequency. So a mantra is anything that has a positive frequency and vibration to it. And the more we chant this, the bigger the field increases for us. So and, that's, and you know that's, what, you, know, you, you are so right. You are hundred percent right because when I, when I chant, when I do a mantra, when I say "Why Guru, Why Guru, Why Guru," yeah. each time I am saying it, I find myself getting relaxed in a different state, yes. and because I'm focused on it, I can feel the, the physiology changes. I can feel the the mind just relaxing, you know. And I can go, "Why Guru, Why Guru, oh, Guru Nanak, Guru Nanak." Yeah. But I keep saying these things. I do. You are right. I do find myself enlightened. You know, I do. You are hundred percent right. And I tell you something, you know, we need to teach meditation to the people the way they need to be taught. So, for example, if somebody really, really is a, a deep believer in Guru Nanak, if we say to them, OK, we're going to chant the name of Jesus right now, it's just not going to resonate, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the person is bad or it doesn't mean that we're teaching some religious sect. It means that we have to align with each other. They're all one at the end of the day. So, yes. we, you know, we it have some... Exactly. So we have some, uh, you know, seeker students, older people. I love, I love working with the older people because no one's there for them, right? So yeah, yeah, I love yeah. teaching meditation to them. So we sit there, and then the majority of them they're seek. So when we say, okay, we say hello. Now we're going to chant Wahe Guru. So we chant Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, and actually they go so deep. So you know. We have to align with the person, you know, instead of trying to get them to do what we want, we have to understand where they're at and help them to be the best version that they can with who they're connected with. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm a, from a Hindu culture, but you know, for years I lived with a, a Sikh family. So I, I used to listen to all the books that she used to read in the morning, the prayers and stuff, but I listened because I felt the frequency and vibration of it. Right. You know, yeah, then yeah. later on in, in, in life, I started to feel real deep connection with Jesus. And then Krishna came in. And then, you know, every now and then when when the talk, when I talk about service, you know, Guru Nanak comes. Right. They are all one. And we need to understand this. If we join hearts and souls as one, then we can really make a difference in the world. The religion, you know, religion really separates us because religion is saying this is right this is wrong but if we understand everyone's right right yeah. excellent Thank then, you. yeah I, I mean we're covered with that's, that's excellent i mean we've covered the children okay it'll be nice to get souls light into into schools uh, to obviously oh, to be able to speak to the children more and also is very, i'm very happy to hear that you are uh, indulging the services within the elderly uh, people because it gives them that that freedom, you know, to, to express themselves. And I've seen some of the pictures that you sent me over of how everybody is just so intrigued by, by what you're saying. Um, the, the next one I'd like to cover is the, 
uh, for example, the guy who's got got so much going on in his life, he's, he's got two jobs going on, he's busy, he's got the kids, you know, the average busy guy. And this person turns around and goes, you know, what? I've really got time to do this. I've really got time to meditate. I've got time to chant. I mean, what is your advice to these people? You know, I would say to everybody that everybody has time to do something at any point in their life. It's that we don't see it as important enough, right? That's the first thing. So it's not high, high, high enough on our priority list to do. Secondly, it's preconceived ideas about what meditation means. So, for example, a person walking from the car to the school, right? You've got that, you've got that maybe two minutes of walking. You can do the meditation in that two minutes. You can just connect, do the six power techniques and just chant. You know, there's a song we we sing, and then it's so, so simple. But even if you do the one line, I love my heart and soul, I love my heart and soul. We're, we've translated this into about 30 languages now, you know, 50 languages now. And one of them is Punjabi. Um, I wish I had practiced it. I don't, I haven't practiced it enough, but I can sing it in Hindi. And so this is something you can sing all the time. We can give MP3s, you can download an app, and you can listen in your car. So if you're driving, you just listen to positive frequency vibrational things in your car. Nowadays, what do people listen to in the car? They listen to the news or they listen to some rough songs, you know? Like, for example, I will survive, go now, go, you know, songs like that. They used to be really, really um, empowering, so they believed in those days. But if you look at the negativity connotations of that song, they're actually not empowering. And so you can do meditation no matter what state of life your being is, no matter how busy you are. I think we can all find one or two minutes. And this is a key thing. We can teach one minute meditation, you know, that you can do in one minute just by speaking the mantra and just by doing the invocation, that's your one minute meditation. And then what will happen is you will enjoy it. As you enjoy it, the one minute will go to two minutes. A two minutes will go to three minutes and increase and increase and increase. So, you know, that's the way to do this. And other, other times it's just to maybe find time to join, maybe join our, our Monday classes, which is on Zoom. You can just register. It's free for everyone at the moment. And we teach them. So that's in your lunch hour. That can be that one hour. Because most people can do it with others, but they find it difficult to do it on their own. Okay. So, so if you've just joined us, guys, you're watching Positive Minds here on the Seek channel. And today I have with me my guest, Ila Kagram from Souls Light, who is reminding us all of the power of meditation and Back to what you just saying there, uh, Ila, that if we do want to find time, we can. And it's all about finding that inner peace. And I found that, you know, throughout the years where I have been, you know, I haven't been listening to the radio on the way to work. I'd rather just do a chant on the way to work. You know, it makes it make it does make a big difference. So, Ila, if anyone out there wants to contact you uh, to, to know more about uh, I was like, what's the best way they can contact you, please? So they can contact me on www.ilakagram, so that's I-L-L-A-K-H-A-G-R-A-M for mother, dot com. Um, please feel free. You can find me on Facebook, Ila Kagram. You can find me on YouTube. You know, the, I've got contact. Is I'm very open and I'm very, I'm very um free for people to connect with me because I want to help some. So please, you know, through the website, through Facebook, through YouTube. Um, what other means are there? There's Instagram. I'm on Instagram. So, you know, you can connect with me with any of those. And of course, you can connect with Jag and Jag can connect you with me as well. Excellent, excellent. Ila, I'd like to thank you so much for coming on the show today, reminding us about something that many of us have forgotten about, the power of meditation. And you're the expert and the advice you've given out to me and the viewers out there. I'd really like to thank you for that. So Ila, thank you very much for joining us today. So there you go, go you. guys. You're welcome. Today with me, I've had Ila Kagram, who's reminding us about something that you know, we, maybe we have forgotten. Uh, have we forgotten to meditate and say, why guru, why guru, 
Weigel, with everything that goes around us, you know, because that can make a big difference on our mental health being, on our phys physicality. You know, if you like, like, like Ila just said there, if you've got pain in the knee, put your hand on it and say, Weigel, speak to it, you know, feel the, feel the light come through, you know, and this, this time, 2020, if we can do this stuff, if we can do this meditation, we will find our inner peace. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today on Positive Minds. And until next time, keep yourself motivated and inspired. Why would you get